Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about a surprise pick the Washington Commanders could make at 16. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Also hit that like button and that notification bell as well. And Mike is still not, you know, fixed. We'll be fixed in the next few days. So this past week on John Kimes live stream or live show, he took a bunch of questions from fans. And one of those questions was, what would be a surprise pick he could see happening? And he said that if there was a surprise position that the commanders would, could take at 16, he said it could be an edge rusher. Doesn't think it will happen, but if someone fell and none of their top guys were there, he could see it. So, again, not a likely scenario, but if, let's say, the top corners are gone and their top offensive linemen are gone and maybe a DN that they thought was not going to be there is there, maybe they take them. For me... I don't like that. I don't think they should be doing that when you have Chase Young and Montez Sweat on your roster. But that's their thought process. That is their thought process. and Or that's what Kime said. So let's get into it a little bit in terms of some of those guys that could be an option at 16. So Nolan Smith is one guy that you would think, but Kime kind of said he doesn't think that would happen. <clears throat> he didn't really explain too much why, but... That's he, he kind of said probably not Nolan Smith. Uh, Luke Van Ness from Iowa is an option as well. And then Tyree Wilson is another option. And then you could throw in Miles Murphy from Clemson as well. Those are kind of options I had. Maybe they would do a surprise one, but the first three are the most likely. In, or Luke Van Ness and Tyree Wilson and Nolan Smith I thought would be an option, but doesn't seem like Kime thinks that is a possibility, but just want to give you guys those kind of op. Or I want to give you guys all the options that they could take <clears throat> at 16. So again, I think corner and you know tackle and guard are a little bit higher up on the list. But if a guy that they really like is there at 16, they would probably end up taking them. And hey, it is what it is. Again, that's just not my preferred you know scenario because they already have you know Montez Sweat who's been really he hasn't been amazing but he's been really solid every year getting you like eight you know seven to nine sacks every single season and he's really really close to getting more he's good against the run and yeah overall very good player and you have him at least for this year and then Chase Young if you give him that fifth year option you have him for two years which I think they'll do so you don't need to get an edge rusher now Maybe in the third round or fourth round, and maybe you can develop him. But the first round, I just don't think you need to do that. I really don't think, I don't see the need for them to go out there and draft a guy at 16 at edge rusher when you already have two guys that you spent a first round pick on. One of those guys, guys being Chase Young, who you spent the second overall pick on. So for me, I am not with it. I don't like it at all. I would be really upset if they took an edge rusher at 16, even if they traded back. Even in the second round, I think that is a, it's not a good pick. Because you saw what they did last year where they took Ferry Mathis in the second. Same, pretty much same scenario. And, you know, maybe it works out, but, you know, he got hurt, which they can't really control in terms of predicting that because I don't think he had much of an injury history at Alabama. But... They could have gone other positions and kept, let's say, Tim Settle and maybe drafted someone in the middle of the draft, like John Ridgeway or somewhere, someone else, and it would have worked out fine. We'll see if Aaron Mathis might still end up being a really good player as that third D tackle on the roster. But I see that as a very <clears throat> similar scenario to this season, or you know, to where they are right now, where I just don't see the need for a D, a D end at 16. Again, second round, maybe still think that's too early. Like, second round, I still wouldn't like it. I think that would be comparable to the Federer Mathis move. First round would be even worse. Third to fourth round, you know, third round wouldn't love it. If it's good, really good value at third round, I would be uh, I would be happy with it. And if fourth round, same thing. I would really be happy with it. I feel like first round and second round, there's far, you know, bigger needs than those two positions. So that's that's what I would do for the Commanders. <clears throat> Let's go over some options again. He said Nolan Smith, probably not a realistic option. Luke Van Ness from Iowa. It's kind of been rising up draft boards ever since the season ended. Six foot five, two 270 pounds. Defensive end has played for two seasons. 
and about seven sacks per season, no forced fumbles, <clears throat> one pat, you know, basically blocking the pass. So the production isn't insane, but Iowa, from what I've heard, has a lot of like seniority in terms of like they'll start they'll start the seniors and they'll start the upperclassmen over the underclassmen. So even if the guys are better, so <clears throat> I don't know, it doesn't really make sense, but that's what they do. And that's why his production isn't amazing. But a lot of people like him. Let's go over some, you know, information about him. Again, six foot five, 270 pounds, 270 pounds, four, five, eight, 40 yard dash, 31 inch vertical jump. So not amazing. Okay. Numbers right there. Uh, some strengths, uh, good frame, outstanding lean muscle mass, good play strength to anchor and press blockers, two gapper, sees runner and uh, dis disengages to tackle with timing. And you guys can see some of the other stuff. Agility seems to crown mobile quarterbacks. Weaknesses, forward lean can be countered by blockers, hasn't learned to transition from uh, bull rusher and a closer, very average foot quickness for inside rush moves, lacked effectiveness as an interior rush. Well, that's why we're going to use him as an edge guy. But yeah, <clears throat> sometimes you'll need to stunt and you want a guy that's a little bit versatile. But he's an option. Again, don't really like it. Don't think we should take him at 16. Same thing with Nolan Smith. He's, you know, got good potential. But, he, you know, if he didn't have these injuries, he would probably be higher up there. Uh, but, you know, the sack production isn't insane. You see what, like six, like 12 sacks, 11 and a half sacks over four years, but he's dealt with some injuries for sure, which has, you know, limited his sack production, but I'm not taking a guy like that at 16 when we have far, far bigger needs like either of the offensive line positions, but preferably tackle um, and maybe you can move Wiley inside, which I don't think they'll do, but you could move Andrew Wiley inside. And then you got, you know, cornerback is a bigger need. Even tight end would be a need. And if if one of those top guys is there, hey, someone's going to need him more than you do and trade back. Just trade back and let someone else get that guy, whether it be Luke Van Ness, Tyree Wilson, or, yeah, any of these guys. And then you can go ahead and draft a corner or tackle or any one of those guys later on in the draft. So that's kind of my take on it. But we'll get into some of these other guys as well. Tyree Wilson, another top guy, six foot six, two hundred seventy five pounds, and he's he's probably the top the top guy here that uh, I'm going to be talking about. There's other guys like Will Anderson, but and Jalen Carter. I don't think those guys are going to be there. And Jalen Carter, if he is, I mean, he's more an interior guy, so I don't know if I would take him. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, if I, I'm not taking an interior guy at sixteen, unless you think he can move to edge, Tyree Wilson played at Texas Tech, six foot six. 275 pounds and production is solid seven uh 14 sacks over the last two years and a forced fumble so not amazing production but solid let's get uh i'll give you guys the buy on him again six foot six 271 pounds did not I don't, looks like he didn't do anything at the combine except for bench press 23 reps right there uh his nfl comparison is his uh is a Gianza. strengths elite size with massive wingspan Controls tight ends at the point of attack. Rex run plays with hard backside crash. Swings long levers for slap and swim rush uh, wins. Again, I, I don't know all this stuff. Just reading off stuff. You guys can see some of the stuff as well. Lacks explosiveness. Slower to process movement and lo uh, loses his contain. So you guys can see all of that right there. But yeah, those are the main guys. Tyree Wilson, if he's there, maybe that tempts him a little bit. But there's going to be teams. Well, first off, if he's there, he's probably there for a reason. And second off... If he is one of the top guys, you can, someone's going to want him more than you do, and you can trade back, get some good assets, and get a position, someone at more of a position of need than edge where you've invested two first-round picks already. So I just don't really think it's a good option. And then Miles Murphy is another guy. He would be, he's probably, his range is like 12 to 25 so this would not be like oh you're getting really good value six foot five 268 pounds bench press reps 25 his nfl comparison antoine odom uh strengths nfl size long arm rush moves to run tackle into the pocket lateral burst to beat tackles across the face off the snap use a spin move to disengage from run blocks and then some weaknesses as well as you guys can see there so i just wanted to give you guys some <coughs> 
you know, propose a scenario there about edge rushers that the commanders could take and just the possibility of them doing it. Again, I don't think they should do it at all. I think it's a bad idea, even if it's good value. And people are always like, take best player available. Well, you take best player available at position of need. Not necessarily your top position of need, but maybe your top five positions of need. And you take the best player. This is not a position of need. It's a luxury to have. And you still have Sweat. You still have Chase under contract for this coming season. And Chase, you have the opportunity to have him under contract for two seasons. So for me, doesn't make sense. Don't do it. If one of these guys falls, trade back, get some good value. And, you know, draft a corner, guard, tackle, maybe even tight end in the first round. And then in the second or third round or fourth round, maybe then you can take an edge rusher. Even the second round is a little bit of a reach for me, but I'd rather do that than the first round. So that's it for today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new. And peace.